Nick Madura, Nelson Mandela, stated and I quote, there is no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. And that's the reason why I took agriculture to be the cornerstone that will transform Africa into a great continent. Africa is a continent that has the largest population of young people. Over 70% are less than 30 years old. The continent has the longest river in the world, starting from Sudan in the south, Lake Victoria, to the Mediterranean Sea in the north. The continent has the greatest wealth of fisheries that can feed the whole world. But yet there's a paradox. This same continent is the poorest continent in the world. That is akin to the Ethiopian paradox called the thirsty child of the Nile. It is a paradox that means how can a child that is born in the Nile River could be thirsty? We cannot continue doing the same thing all over and over again and expect different result. That is what the greatest scientist in the world, Albert Einstein, called insanity. There's an African proverb that says, the greatest crime in a desert is to find water and tell no one about it. I'm here to show you where the water is, so that by the time you go home, you will think and implore what can be done to Africa as a continent. Because you know what? No matter what your profession is, if Africa is poor, you are indeed poor. I will quickly tell you a parable of a chicken and the golden egg to explain the situation of Africa. It's about a farmer that breeds chicken, and the chicken produces golden egg. This farmer, out of greed, out of short focus, decided to sell his chicken, and then borrow money to buy the egg. This is exactly what Africa is doing. We sell our natural resources, and then we now borrow money to buy what we need. You might wonder, it is not my business. I'm a medical doctor. I'm a professor. I'm an engineer. Africa can go hungry. As long as I can drive in Mercedes Benz, live in Porsche House, anything is fine. I'm here tonight to tell you, you are deceiving yourself. Because no matter what you wear, no matter how handsome you look, when you walk outside, on this Adelaide Terrace, and there's a choice between a citizen of Australia and you as an African. The citizen of Australia will be respected more than you. Even if you're a minister of petroleum or minister of mines, as many people have packed up tonight, I've just ended. As long as you come from that continent, you are not respected. We are looking for dream builders. Only 432, no more. These people will be challenged to transform Africa from state of poverty to state of prosperity. If you are interested, contact the APA Secretariat and you'll be guided to. Why is Africa poor? What we do now as Africans, as policy makers in Africa, as ministers, as head of states, as presidents, 
Where do we see ourselves in future? How do we get to where we are? Or how do we get to the future? Then I'll give you a little takeaway message to reflect upon when you get home. So why is Africa poor? I attended about two nights ago a seminar captioned Food Security in an Insecure Age. I have taken an example of the poverty of Africa to be similar to a person sitting on four-legged stool. The first leg is availability of resources. We have everything to the envy of the world. Everything you can think of. I just mentioned it. The youth, we have them in large numbers. The raw materials. In fact, you can think of any resources. They are there. Then why are we poor? To be, food, to be secured in food, you need good governance, policy, leadership, and stability, political stability. You, you need to get access to where the raw materials are. Most countries in Africa today are very poor in their network. And of course, the resource utilization. We don't have the processing facilities. We don't have the entrepreneurs that we take the raw materials from where it's harvested to the end point of where it has to be consumed. And just imagine for a moment, you don't have all these, but you have the resources. What has happened? You'll be poor. The population of Africa's smallholders, farmers, are more than 60%. Yet, the contribution to agriculture is less than 23%. So, my focus tonight is on the smallholders, farmers, and not on the big chunks who jump, grab the smallholders, farmers, rip them off. Give them one dollar a day, and then make huge money for themselves at the expense of Africa. So what do we do now? We export what we need and import what we don't need. We export opportunities and import poverty. We export our best brains and import mediocres. We call our best brain skilled migrants, economic refugees, and the, me the mediocres we import, we call them expatriates. Now, to the point, we export cocoa beans, and we import cocoa powder. We export cotton, and we import Cloth materials. At worst cases, we even import clothes from Salvation Army. We export cow pigs and we import big beans or black eyed beans from India, from China, and from Canada. We import cassava tubers. We export cassava tubers and import cassava chips. What a paradox. So where, we, where do we see ourselves in the future? I've termed the mission C2C for P, which stands for con connecting two continents for prosperity. We are not here by chance. We are here in Australia by divine purpose. I'm talking to Afri African Australians here. So we have to think how we can make the use of our talent our knowledge, our skills, our experience to better and transform Africa. So the mission looks like this. The SWOT analysis, most of you must have heard about, about that. You take the opportunities 
that's available in one continent and mitigate it against the weakness of the other continent. For example, the strength, the abundance of, of Africa is chocolate, cocoa powder, cassava starch, cowpeas, etc. etc. And the, the weakness is in Australia is the aging population. Look at the strength of Africa, population 1.3 billion people, second largest in the world, and young population. Against the threats, uh, uh, the, the threats in, uh, in Australia, bar security threats, food safety risks, and so on and so forth. Africa and Australia are very, very unique because they are linked by the Indian Ocean, have similar natural resource endowment, and diverse geographic features. Now, the vision I have for Africa is this. Ellen Keller said, and I quote, the only thing worse than being born blind would be to have sight without vision. So the vision has a numerical code, 38541432. Let me decode it for you, because my time remains five minutes. 42 APA, agripreneur generating $100 billion a year from value added agri products traded between 54 African nations and eight territories of Australia within a time frame of three years. $100 billion is doable. How do we get there? Begin with the head in mind. That's the second principle of the seven habits of highly effective people. Now, how do you get there? You, we have to stop doing what we are doing and do a new thing, which means we have to turn the pyramid upside down. Instead of focusing on the policies, we focus on the small older farmers of Africa and Australia. And from there, we take it to the consumers of the products. That's the way to succeed. We, instead of being policy focused, we become human figures. I will explain more about that during my Q&A time because my time is up. Now, what are the drivers we need to, uh, to, 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 to develop the farming system in Africa? If you check my book, Environmental Project Management, all the geospatial tools you need are in that book, such as GIS, Precision Farming, Leakage Free PDS, Read Time Market Information, and so on and so forth. Now, we have done a lot of blah, blah, blah. It's high time we do, do, do. We have been walking the walk. We must talk the talk. I have designed this mind map to show you how you take a bean seed and then transform it to produce a cocoa powder, which I'll show you as an example later on. So you talk to the farmer. That gentleman beside me there is the, co is the president of the Cocoa Farmer Association in Cote d'Ivoire. They grab the seed, process it, convert it to cocoa powder, and here we are the first company in the history of Australia to supply Australia consumers with 100% cocoa powder with the tag Product of Africa. If you check any shop in Australia today, you will not see a single shop where a cocoa powder is shown product of Africa. That is too shameful. Now, you take it from the cocoa value chain, the, co uh, the primary production, through to the market distribution. We make sure we know who is responsible for each phase, not just buying from the market and throw it to the shop. Now, to conclude, this is my takeaway message. Take, Africa, uh, take agriculture as a business. We cannot apply yesterday's method today and business and be in business tomorrow. We have to take agriculture serious. Thank you so much. <laughs>